What are you doing? Uh, wow. Well, taking in the morning air. <laughs> well, before you decide to take anything else, I warn you, I have a full inventory of every stick of furniture, ornament or painting in that flat. The moment anything goes missing, the police will be down on you like a ton of bricks. Thank you, Biff. I won't be needing you again till five o'clock. You trying to avoid me? Don't be ridiculous. I've got a full day's work here. Might as well grab some free time. You can sit outside all day if you prefer. No, I think I'll get back to the village. Look, I really must disagree with you moving in these... these... Uh, I mean, they're not even house trained. It's only until their place is renovated. Well, can you imagine the damage they could have done by then? Well, not with you keeping them in order. So if you're telling me you can't handle a simple country family like that, I might have to reconsider whether you're up to being managing director of this organisation. Fifteen quid for a T-shirt, you get five for that down the market. Oh, but everyone's got a mum. Well, then all the more reason not to have one. You want to be yourself, not follow the crowd. Your mum's right, you know. But I'm going to treat her, eh? Just this once. There you go. Cheers, Dad. I just said no. Why do you always have to undermine me? <sighs> I don't mean to, love. It's just, you know, she's bound to be upset with Kelly going away. A little treat. Cheer up. Never learn, do you? Spoiling her won't make her love you any more. She'll just walk all over you like Kelly did. I'll give it a rest, Viv. Kelly's gone. No point going on about it. Look, it might take quite a while for her to realise this, but she still needs us and this is still her home and maybe you ought to remind her of that. She won't listen. She never has. But maybe that's because you've always said what you think she wants to hear instead of telling her what's right. And I got home last night to a note from Mandy that said the Dingles had moved to home farm. What? Well, it's only to the nursery flat and only until their place is repaired, but, you know. That still sounds like a recipe for disaster. I didn't think that's how Chris sees it. I was actually just happy playing the country gent for a while. Well, Lisa seems to be a sensible woman. Maybe she'll keep them all in check. We live in hope. Mm. There's your calls. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks. Right. See you later. Yeah. Look, if you're worried about Chris, I can rearrange your appointments, give you a bit of time to get up there. No. No, I'm sure Chris can cope with that. As a matter of fact, I'm more worried about you. If I'm getting in the way, I can start trying to find a room to rent. That's not what I mean. You're welcome to stay as long as you need, but... I still think you should sort things out at home. They are sorted. I'm never going to speak to either of them again. I know what it's like to be stuck in the middle of a family at war. I even left the country once to get away from it. Well, so why'd you come back? Dad did a lot of things that he should have been ashamed of, and Chris takes after him, but it doesn't stop them being family, and it never stopped me loving them. Well, Viv's never been family to me, and Dad won't want me back anyway. Can you be sure of that? I've got those lab samples to chase up. You'll be wanting them later. Well, there's certainly plenty of storage space. Far more suitable and far more expensive. When can I expect your stuff to be moved out of the village hall? When Marlon's finally cleaned this place up. It'll have to be tomorrow. I've got a Women's Institute meeting booked and I want it clear by then. Good morning, Vicar. Glad we could settle our differences so amicably, Eric. Hey. We've got to pay rent for all this lot. You'll be looking for some fast-moving stock. Why the sudden interest? Six full play settings. All marked. <sighs> and where, may I ask, did you come by these? Family heirloom. Nothing to do with him farm, then. Oh, do you want them or not? No. <clears throat> uh, any chance of any more family heirlooms coming on the market soon, then? Huh? Oh, we'll have in all, Eric. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Thank you. Thank you. There we are, young fella. You shouldn't be doing that. Let me send one at lads over, don't you, Art? They don't work for me anymore, Seth. Besides, I'd rather do it myself. Got some prospective clients due. I want everything to be just right. Looks like they're here already. I thought we'd be seeing Mrs Tate. Will she be along later? 
Oh, I'm afraid Kim's away on business. Uh, it's just me and the stable staff here right now. I expect she's keeping a low profile after all the scandal. Well, indeed. Although I'm authorised to negotiate. We don't really need her. I'll kill her. I know how you feel, but I don't think that's a good idea. I will not be humiliated in my own. Have a row now, and you'll blow the whole deal. And it's my guess you need money right now. That's putting it mildly. So bite your tongue till the client's gone. And then you can see to a good and proper. Thanks, Seth. You know, when the chips are down, you learn who your real friends are. Uh, a bottle of porch, please, Viv. Not your usual drink. Well, we're like a snifter up at the big house. Toss the sun going down. Oh, well, Butch runs the Union Jack down the flagpole and Mandy plays Royal Britannia on the spoons. It's the best you've got. It's all we've got. Surprised a country gentleman like you doesn't have a standing order at Fortnum's. Was a laugh, too. Oh, uh, <laughs> will you be joining us for a few drinks this evening, Zoe? Uh, I'm a bit busy right now, Zach, so I'll have to uh, forego that pleasure. Oh, shame. I thought we might have a few hands of bridge. Well, another evening, then. Oh, uh, maybe we could do charade. I bet Chris is a belter at that. <laughs> I suppose you takes getting used to unwelcome guests. You've got the Dingles at home farm and uh, Kelly at your place. Kelly's very welcome. I'm just sorry it had to be under these circumstances. How is she? Pretty down. Has she said what she's going to do? Not really. Except she's never going to speak to either of you again. Well, it's no loss as far as we're concerned. She pushed it too far this time. Oh, shut up, Vic. If we came round, do you think she'd see us? Oh, I don't know. I wish she'd try. Someone's got to make the effort to sort this mess out. Well, thanks for your time, Lady Tara. We'll be in touch. Are you sure I can't persuade you to come in for a drink? Mustache. Besides, it looks as if your stable girl is anxious to talk to you. How dare you treat me like one of your staff? I'm a full partner in the stud. I set up that meeting. They came here to see me. I was trying to help. Look at yourself. You're hardly dressed to meet clients. I'm in my working clothes. They're businessmen, Kim. They don't know anything about horses except as a commodity. And a rumour of horse dung is unlikely to be their favourite perfume. As long as you're not thinking you can cut me out of this business. On the contrary! I pinched the deal. I've just made a healthy profit for both of us. You should be thanking me. Oh, Zach, I'm glad you're here. I've been called away in a breakdown and that bothers you any minute. Oh, don't worry about a thing. I can handle it. Right, well. It's in pretty good condition, but just the boat. I can't open it. So see if you can get it open and uh, find the spare wheel. Hey. All done, Dad. Oh, good. Well, you can make a cup of it. Uh, but leave this on the back seat. Make sure it's covering that rip in the upholstery. Been a while since this has been open. <laughs> Ooh, it's stuck fast. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Cheers, sir. Don't suppose we'll be signing for you on this holiday, Betty, huh? <laughs> Guess it'll be all that cordon bleu stuff. Oh, no, Terry. It's a health farm. They don't let you near anything with cholesterol in it. You'll recognise her when she gets back, Terry. She's going to look like a film star. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, it's a pity you can't come, really. I bet they've got those supermodels there, you know, keeping in trim for the next boat, don't you? Yeah, well, I don't think they're going to go for the likes of me, baby. Now, don't underestimate yourself, Biff. You're a very attractive young man, and you can't mourn your Linda forever. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I didn't know you were into health food, Seth. Load of rubbish. <laughs> My father ate bread and dripping every day of his life. Did him no harm. Oh. So I wouldn't like this place that Betty's taking you on holiday, then. What are you talking about? The health farm. You know, carrot juice, lettuce, no booze. Didn't she tell you about it? Hey, hey, Betty, about this holiday. Oh, now I'm glad you mentioned that. You better hurry up and ask Chris Tate for some time off, cos I don't want you missing out. 
look, I'm really interested. I just want to take a closer look at it. Yeah, well, you can. Not, not today. If your wife fixed the appointment. I've come a long way. Yeah, but well, she didn't realise, you see, that there's still some work to do on it. <laughs> You've had another offer, haven't you? That's well, why you're trying to get rid of me. You can have first refusal. So long as you go away now, come back in a couple of days and I'm sure we can do business. What's going on? Hey, I've told you. You've got first refusal. Now, get lost and I'll change my mind about that at all. <laughs> OK, then. <laughs> Lisa's going to kill you, Dad. He was virtually begging you to take his money off him. Some things more important than money, son. Oh, yeah? Like what? Your freedom. That car could be a one-way ticket to ten years in the slammer. Don't be daft, Dad. You can't get that sort of a sentence for faking an MOT certificate. <laughs> Serious than that, son. You'll see for yourself when you open that boot. What is it, Dad? Prepare yourself for a shock, son. Somebody drops dead in the middle of the night. They don't shove the body in the boot of a car, so we haven't it's got to be murder. Yeah, but, but, but we haven't done it, have we? I mean, we're innocent. Who's going to believe that? We're dingles. We get blamed for everything. Well, what if we just explained everything, you know? Told the truth. Dead lock us up and throw away the key. The only hope we've got is to get rid of the thing. This is coming. Oh, he got called away on urgent business. But he'll be back in a couple of days to clinch the deal. Good. Did you get the boot open? Still working on it. Oh, well, perhaps if we all pull together, we'll shift it. No. I'm sure me and Butch can handle it. Besides, shouldn't you be getting back to your own farm? I'm working here this afternoon. I was hoping that uh, you would cook a special meal tonight. We could invite Chris Tate round as a gesture of appreciation. You up to something? I can't win, can I? Here I am, offering the milk of human kindness, and you immediately think the worst. Sorry, Zach. It would be a nice gesture. I make rabbit stew. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I'll just go to the shop and get some stuff. Right, come on, I've got much time. I've got to get this thing out of here. <laughs> I think we ought to go, Jed. I don't like it when the kid's coming. Hang on a bit. Just put that Garbo magazine where Pollard can see it. Autograph, copy, real collector's piece. His tongue will be hanging out. But you know it's not a real signature. Did it myself. But he doesn't know that. It's all yours, Eric. Um, shame you can't take your wrinklies with you. They do get the place the wrong image, you know. They've paid their bill, they're entitled to finish their tea. Have fun. Uh, can I get you anything else, or are you uh, just leaving? Uh, don't worry, we're, we're just off. Oh, good. <laughs> I've told you not to leave that magazine where people can see it. It's very valuable. Someone might come and nick it. Uh, what's that? Oh, uh, a, a fan magazine signed by Garbo herself. Mrs Cunningham was just showing it to me. Um, I know a few collectors who might be interested in that. Oh, it's not for sale. Oh. Pity. I managed to con 15 quid out, my dad. Is that enough to get your nose pierced? Yeah, but we're going to have to make ourselves look older, otherwise we won't do it. My mum and dad will go spare. Chicken you now. I'll do it if you will. I just want to talk to you, Kelly. I've got nothing to say to you. At least it give her a chance. Look. I know you feel that you can't live in the same house as me, but what's between us shouldn't mean that you cut your dad out of your life. You two have always been so close. Until I started finding out the truth. What are you talking about? I thought you both argued over me. Is that what he said? 
So he's even lying to you now? Well, then maybe you better let me know what's going on. Ask him. I'm sorry. She's been very upset since she went to see her mother's grave. What? You didn't know? No. Betty wants me to ask you for time off for this holiday she's won. Fine. Put a leave form in the office. I'll authorise it. I didn't think you'd be able to spare me just now, though. We're right busy. Seth, I've never noticed you doing any work when you are here. I'm sure we can manage quite well without you. I'm a loyal employee. I should hate to let you down. <sighs> we won't notice. Just go away and enjoy your holiday. You don't want to go, do you? Fine. Permission refused. Satisfied? Go away, I've got more important things to deal with. What are you two doing? Well, just bringing the rest of our stuff for storage. Well, I don't want any in the house. Use one of the outbuildings. Yes, Mr. Chet. Whatever you say, sir. <laughs> well, it's that time of year again. Another summer fair to plan. And I'm delighted to welcome a new member of our committee. I'm sure Paddy will have lots of ideas to attract more young people this year. Thank you. Uh, I've already uh, made out a list of a few things. Yeah, yes, well done. But we, we do like to try to stick to our agenda. Now, the, the first item is the cake stall. Perhaps you'd like to give us an update on that, Sarah? Well, yeah, everything's fine. Usual cakes, usual people. Do you get any custard pies? <laughs> well, yes, Mrs Atkins usually makes a few. We'll get to make a few more, then I can do me slap her custard in the vicar's face. Stall, quit a time, you won't mind, would you, Ashley? Well, I suppose it's all for a good cause. But it does sound rather vulgar. I must insist that we stick to the agenda. Now, the, the next item is the flower arranging competition. Uh, Betty Eggleton will tell us about that. <clears throat> OK, where to? Oh, let's go home. Hey, I thought you'd want to go out and celebrate after the deal you pulled off. <laughs> Not really in the mood. My divorce came through today. Well, I would say that's another reason for a party. You've well already been. Hmm. Still stirred up a lot of bad memories. Does your head in, living in the past? I should know. But you still can't let Linda's memory go, can you? Well, maybe it's time we both moved on, eh? Why didn't you tell me what's been going on, Vic? No point. Damage had already been done by then. The damage was done years ago. I always told you you were storing up trouble by keeping her in the dark. You tried to tell her? Oh, yeah, I remember. Mummy's gone to heaven was about as far as you ever got. Well, she was too young to understand anything else. I just thought that, you know, she'd forget about Anne in time. You mean you hoped she would? And then it would let you off the hook? You've always been too much of a coward to face the truth, Vic. If you'd have told Anne about us from the start, then things wouldn't have ended up like this. I was trying to protect you and all. You know what Reg was like. You tell him what he'd do. That's part of the new stock. It's been going on. Me and your dad have had a little talk. We're all going over to see Kelly. No, I don't think that's a very good idea, Viv. I don't want Donna involved in all this. It's about time this family started telling each other the truth. I want to come, Dad. Mummy and Kelly have had our rows, but I never really wanted to leave home. I've got to try and get her back. Betty's been telling me all about your holiday. You must be really looking forward to it. Aye, I was, but I've got some bad news. What are you talking about? That little swine Chris Tate is refused to give me time off. I'll soon sort him out. Oh, don't do that. You know what he's like, he'll probably sack me again. No, you just go off and enjoy us, and don't worry about me sitting all alone at home every night. But I do worry about your health, Seth. I think that holiday would have done you good. Oh, aye, I know, but there's nothing we can do about it. Oh, I think there is. I'll leave you a list of jobs that still want doing around the house. That way I can be sure you're not sat in here boozing while I'm away. I told you I didn't want you lot in the house. I'm cooking a meal for you. You've got your own kitchen. I'm cooking a proper meal. I need a proper cooker. It's our way of saying thank you for uh, all your kindness, like. Yeah, we're sorry if we've offended you, but we thought we were paying you your dues. 
I mean, after all, you're head of the Turk clan now. It doesn't seem right you cooking for yourself. No, I suppose it'd be all right, just this once. Nah, don't worry, we know our place. We were going to eat ours in one of the barns anyway. Are you making fun of me? I meant every word. We know what a busy man you are. You don't want to be wasting your time with idle chatter with us. Uh, yeah, well, me and Butch have got things to do. Yeah. <coughs> You're in for a real treat. Uh, you have a taste of this. Hey, go on. Come on. Mm. Oh, go get it. Uh, oh, perhaps I'd better leave you to it. I'd rather you stayed. If I'm going to hear another lot of lies, I'd like a witness. Kelly's right. There's been a lot of lying. But that doesn't mean to say you're going to like the truth. Look, uh, I think you better let me do this, Viv. You've had your chance. You remember your mum as some kind of saint. Well, maybe she was to you, but... She could also be a very vindictive, vicious cow. If that's how she was to you, it shows she had good taste. That's how she was to me and your dad. She knew we loved each other, but there was no way she'd ever let him go. Because <gasps> she was sticking by her wedding vows. Shame you two couldn't. I never knew what Reg was like when I married him. I soon found out. The whole estate was terrified of him. But they had it easy compared with me. You expect me to feel sorry for you now? The easiest thing for me would have been to get myself and Scott out. I was going nowhere without Vic. That's what I told her that night. It'll be a while before they get through this lot, so we can hide it behind the nails till we find somewhere safe to bury it. Right. 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 Oh, aye. <laughs> what are you talking to? We're just tidying up the stable. Might as well make ourselves useful. Uh, anyway, uh, Lisa says that dinner's ready and she wants to know if you're having it out here or you're eating off the table like the rest of us. Just come in. I don't blame you for hating me, but at least we might understand each other a bit better now. You did what you thought was right. I can see that. Viv's always done her best for you. And Scott. Donna, she's treated you all the same. So maybe now's the time to forgive and forget, eh, love? I can't do that. It wasn't easy for Viv to come here, you know. She wouldn't have done it if she didn't love you. I can almost believe that. But it's not her I can't forgive. It's you. All my life, you were the only person I'd ever trusted. You, you were the one I ran to when I was hurt. You were the one I thought would always be there for me. It'll be like that again. Nothing's changed. But it was all based on lies. Can't you see that? I never want you near me again. 